Uh, so anyways, so... <laughs> um... Yeah, I just did a video against, uh... About... How some people just enjoy being depressed. Because it's a comfortable feeling. Uh, it's like a comfortable numbness. They're used to it. It's familiar. You know, they've been depressed for so long that it's familiar. My, uh, my brother-in-law is an NA counselor. He's freaking awesome, by the way. And uh, he's got a lot of people in his life that are suffering, obviously, because he's an NA counselor. And, you know, and he sees that they just don't want to get out of it. You know, they're just like, they're, they could change, they could get better, they could work on the depression, or the numbness, but they don't, because it's comfortable. And they actually enjoy it, yeah. Um, there's this. Joss Whedon show. It's called Firefly. It's pretty old now. And uh, there's this ship. A bunch of people are on the ship. They're all suffering. They're all going through their own things. And uh, But there's a captain on the ship. He runs the whole ship. He runs the crew. And he's really interesting. And he, he suffers. And he goes through all these crazy things. And he enjoys it. And there's a new guy that gets on the, on the ship. And he's a preacher. And he starts talking to one of the crew members. And he's like, I, you know, I pretty much have a base understanding of everybody on the ship, but I, I don't really understand the captain. Like, what's his deal? And the person says to the preacher, well, we're all suffering. We're, you know, I'm paraphrasing. Like, we're all suffering. We're all in the woods here. Like, woods meaning the darkness, the depression, the suffering of life. She calls it the woods. But she says the only difference between us and the captain is the captain enjoys being in the woods. Uh, meaning that he enjoys the suffering, he enjoys the depression, he enjoys the hard times in life, and he gets a kick out of it. Um, and I love that. That's so interesting. Um... I have two people in my life right now that are suffering. Uh, you know, they're depressed. But it's so familiar to them. And they're so... It's, it's like a numbness. It's like a comfortable feeling. It's, it's comfort. And they don't want to change because changing would mean that they would have to actually put in the work. <laughs> they would have to study psychology and spirituality and, you know, all these other things. And, and actually work at it every day. And they just, they just don't want to. They've pretty much just given up. Because um, it's comfortable. It's familiar to them. So they just go through life and they're depressed or they're mean to people or they're just unhappy all the time. And they don't really serve a purpose in life. And the, the ones that are mean and really unhappy, um, I guess you could say the purpose they serve is to make other people's life more miserable. And some people don't want to be around those people. They're like, ooh, yeah, I don't want to be around that person. But some people that struggle with not feeling like they're good enough, they actually like to be around those people. Subconsciously, they don't, would never admit that. But they stay married to that person for 25 years. <laughs> and when you stop working on your depression, and you just give up like that, when it just, you're comfortable with being depressed and you just, it just becomes comfortable. Uh, that's very, very dangerous, uh, especially for the people around you, because you're just sucking 
life away from them. It's very selfish. It's very selfish w once you decide that you want to just be comfortable with your depression. Um, but some some people just don't know how to get out of it, right? Uh, me and my buddy Tyler, we were spending time with each other yesterday. And we know this one person. Uh, let's just call her Natasha, right? And... Um, and I was saying to my buddy Tyler, I was just like, you know, I'm like, I really want to start counseling Natasha. Because she's had the same life as me. And she's so loving and she's so kind and she's such a beautiful person. And, but she's suffering and everybody around her that's very close to her knows that she's suffering. And Tyler knows Natasha very well. And uh, Tyler has also had the same upbringing as Natasha, and he's had the same upbringing as me. And he's had a very hard life, and so have I, and so is Natasha. But Tyler is very zen, and he's very happy in life. And he spends a lot of time in stillness, and he spends a lot of time focusing on the present moment. And um, he does the work, you know, he, he knows that he had a hard life, and, and but he puts in the time, he studies spirituality, he studies everything he can get his hands on to feel better, to be better. But the one thing Tyler does, and the one thing that I've done, is when you feel something bad happening, you go into it, you go into the darkness. You experience and feel that emotion. You be with that emotion until you conquer it. You know, you find out what your weakness is, and then you conquer them. You find out what the bad emotions are, and then you conquer them. You find out why you're having them. I think that was fighting off depression 48 or 46. The emotions one, I'm not sure which one. It was like a three-part one. It was massive. Um, but we go into the darkness and we do the hard work because it's hard work, and you got to go into the darkness. So Tyler said, you know, the, the difference between you and me and the difference between Natasha is that you and me go into the darkness and we fight the darkness and Natasha steers away from the darkness. And Natasha is somebody that the way she steers away from the darkness is she gives love to others. She spreads happiness and joy to everybody around her. She eats food for pleasure to make her happy. She doesn't see food as a source to give you energy to fuel you throughout the day, like the CrossFitters do or like I do. She um, sees food as pleasure to give her happiness, which is very dangerous because years later, you're not going to feel very good about yourself, um, you know, um, and you're not going to feel very happy either because you got so much sugar in you and other bad things in you, and sugar causes depression, right? So it's just furthering your depression. Um, you know, she uh, Natasha goes on social media a lot, and she watches things on, watches shows and movies and things like that to avoid the darkness. And, but Natasha's one of those people where she she doesn't spread negativity. She spreads joy and love to everybody around her. She's a beautiful person. So you have two different kinds of people that, you know, are suffering from depression. You have people that are really putting in the work and trying to fight it, like me and Tyler. You have the people like Natasha, who they want to get better, but they're afraid to go into the darkness and, and really solve it and fight it. They escape it and they avoid it by using other means. 
and you have people that just get comfortable with being depressed. Kind of in, you know, they're just going through life. I don't want to say they're giving up, but it's hard, you know, and I think those are the three core people. I'm sure there's tons of others. But I guess that's about it for this one. Um, and having empathy for those people. The only problem with being around a depressed person a lot is you start to lose your empathy towards them. And you're there for them, and you're there for them, and you're, and you're there for them. But after a while, your empathy kind of runs out. And um, there's a psychological term for it. But that's why when people are around depressed people or suicidal people for a long time, um, their empathy card just kind of, it runs out because it's so heavy. So it's hard. But if you are somebody that's depressed, please work at it, you know, um, and, um, and if you're one of those people that has grown familiar with depression, it's a comfortable familiarness, like my, uh, brother-in-law would say, the NA counselor, um, um, please try to work on it just to, you know, be a part of the world and spread light to the people around you instead of whatever you're spreading. I don't know. But you know, people that really grow comfortable with depression, they could also be great creators. Like some of the greatest writers, artists, and musicians throughout history have gotten comfortable with the depression. Um, you know, Tom York, uh, the lead singer of Radiohead, he's created phenomenal work. Um, but he's also clinically depressed. Uh, you know, people like Dostoevsky, just people that are completely kind of off and depressed, uh, they can create beautiful things. You know, just being comfortable with the, the illness of the depression. So if you're an artist, creator, you can choose to do something with it. But it's a choice. Depression is a choice. You could either fight it, you could avoid it, or you could just get comfortable with it and enjoy it. <laughs> Alright guys, gotta go. Peace and enjoy your Tuesday. Have fun man, enjoy.